Good day, everyone, and welcome to all listeners and viewers throughout Alaska and the United States. You are watching an episode of Danakanaga's Our People Speak series with Morris Thompson Cultural Visitor Center, Tanana Chiefs Conference, and Danakanaga. I am Sharon Hildebrand. Tonight's presentation, Small Dots, Far Away, What Am I? Danaka Gadons did. Sidini and Lorraine will uh, say it for us here shortly in winter. We also want to say thanks to our major sponsor, Doy Unlimited. And during this programming, you can find more shows on the Morris Thompson website. And if you feel compelled to support this type of programming, there are links on there as well. Again, I'm Sharon Hildebrand of Nulado, where I was raised by my grandmother, Ellen Peters. I am the village outreach liaison for Doi Unlimited. Our guest is passionate about native languages, and we are happy to have her today, Lorraine David. Welcome, Lorraine. Lorraine was born in Hughes, Alaska to the late Joe and Celia Bedis. Lorraine received her BBA from the University of Alaska Fairbanks and is the project director of the Indigenous Language Project at the Fairbanks Native Association. Language programming is her passion, and she lives in Fairbanks with her family. Please tell me more about yourself, Lorraine. First, I'll introduce myself in Danaka. Um, have us raila. Sitsu gel sitsu ita abedes naka. Aida gel little bides have us raila. Hadot le kakat, haraido. Sitsu gel sitsu ina abedes naka. Has ala kakat, haraido. Jimmy with Annie Koykuk have us raila. Saka is Richard David Bauza Alakak at Hudson. She has her daughter Kak at Nanswan. So in the Fairbanks, Zelda, the Na Na Kayel, the Na Kayel, I said, my name is Lorraine David. I'm from the village of Hughes, Alaska, Hadotle Kakat. My late parents are Joe and Celia Beatus, and my grandparents on my dad's side was the late little uh, Beatus and uh, Ida, who I was named after. And my grandparents on my mom's side were the late... Um, Jimmy and Annie Koikuk, they lived in Alakakit, Alakakat in Danaka. Uh, my husband's name is Richard David. He's from Alakakit, and we live here in Fairbanks. We raised our kids here, and our grandkids are with us now. Basi. Uh, mm-hmm. Basi. Uh, Lorraine, can you um, tell us more about the title, Kadon Tetsini? Kadon Tetsini. Kadon Tetsini. Our stories from a long, long time ago. Um, a lot of people, that's how the stories that our people lived by a long time ago. And uh, they were like mythical in nature, but they they guided us in living. That's how it was. And so um, most of these stories were told during the winter months when it was dark most of the time. And I remember my mom telling us right before bedtime. And I think she's still telling stories and we're all asleep. Mm-hmm. I come from a family of 11 children, and um, my older sisters were grown up by the time um, I remember. Mm-hmm. They were grown up, and so I remember just 
two, well, one of my older sisters was still there, and my other uh, next to me, Peggy, she was adopted out of the family, so she lived in the village, but with my aunt, my mom's older sister. And then um, I had three younger brothers. Mm -hmm. So we all lived just in a one-room cabin, and uh, so mom would put us to bed and, and tell us stories from her bed. So we are, we're all just close to each other, mm. like beds right next to each other. And so it would be kind of dark in the house, you know, bedtime. Mm -hmm. And um, the gas lamp would be on. Mm. That was when they still had gas lamps back then. Mm. They didn't have electricity. And then uh, I was small then. That was like in the late 50s, early 60s. And... Um, She'd start telling us stories, um, and they were just stories. There's a lot of Adan's knee stories about the life ways of our people, how we're supposed to live, and those stories are spiritual in nature. It's about land and animals, and it was a time when the animals talked to us, and... Um, you know, it's mythical, but it's real. I mean, the way we are supposed to live uh, with the animals and mm -hmm. on the land. So um, she used to tell us maybe a couple stories, and then we'd probably be asleep. And, so, <laughs> and then another time in, is in the springtime, during spring camp. Um, Hughes is on the Quaycook River, and there's a hill behind Hughes, and um, it's right next to the river. And so they always were fearful of floods in mm -hmm. the springtime. So everybody would put camp up on the hillside, like uh, up on the hill. And we'd put up a big white tent. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad would be working probably by then at Hog River or in a mining camp. So. My mom had, um, my older sister was married in the village, two of my older sisters, so their husbands and um, the boys, my younger brothers and us would all be putting up tent. And I remember um, the smell of spruce boughs. Mm. <laughs> and uh, spruce boughs in the tent, in a big white tent, and then she'd, we'd all cut spruce boughs, put it down on the uh, ground, and then we'd, she'd make our beds with uh, caribou skin, mm. the mattress with caribou skin, and then she'd have down blankets. My Aunt Ida, I guess, used to make down blankets from wow. goose feathers or something, and so she still had those as an over, she'd put those over the caribou skin, and then we'd all be lined up in bed. And then she'd tell us Qadan Zidni in the spring, too. That would be like early May, probably, wow. or mid-May, I think. It's still cold in the morning. And then we'd just fall asleep listening to stories. And then she would, uh, I'd wake up, and I could smell bacon and pancakes cooking. Mm. Uh, really good memories. It was, I must have been like maybe seven or eight because only my two younger brothers were born then. Yeah, I think my third younger, my youngest brother was maybe a baby mm -hmm. because I took care of him, I remember, in the daytime while my mom is trying to help uh, my sisters and their husbands bring stuff up to the hill from the house, mm -hmm. houses that might get flooded. Some years it flooded, some years it didn't. But um, she used to tell us those. And um, I was going to ask you, you know, thinking about uh, um, the topic of today's show, which is uh, stories of long ago, mm -hmm. what, what type of um, stories, are there different um, sectors of stories that were shared, like um, oh. survival, Hoklani. Yeah. 
There was a lot of Hatani stories, and there's uh, mostly the boys. I guess in the winter, my dad would talk with them about, tell stories to them while they're skinning beavers or something about how to uh, work with animals. I never really heard those ones. Um, but the topics and themes uh, revolved around the life ways mm. of uh, the people. Mm -hmm. And these stories were like instructions on how to live, mm -hmm. plus entertainment mm -hmm. during the winter months. But the stories have, um, they're spiritual. Uh, and it's like, like how our people, you know, there's the Nahata, and so how our people spiritually thought um, on the ways of living, and f since, you know, for years and years, and they were like a Bible to the, like, I guess, like, English Bible, that's how it was with the can people. You can you tell our listeners what Dinahata means and oh. what uh, uh, Huklani means? Okay. Uh, Dinahata is God. Dinahata mm -hmm. Bedna is Jesus. Dinahata mm -hmm. um, is like our uh, being up there. Dina mm -hmm. is our, our uh, being up there. Mm -hmm. And then Dinahata uh, Bedna is his child. Mm -hmm. So Danachata Bedna is Jesus, his child. And Hatlani is like things that we're not supposed to do. Um, I don't know, there was just so many things that are Hatlani, like for instance, even to this day, I don't eat uh, animal. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't even say the name because in English, but it, animal, we call it yeah. kaka, you know, big animals. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not supposed to be around those or even look at them if we, if they say it, like when we're going in the boat, if my brothers say animal or something, then all the girls wouldn't look. Mm -hmm. Only the boys and the men would look. Because their spirit is so strong. Yeah, their spirits are strong, and mm -hmm. um, only certain men, I guess, get them too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know for sure, but um, when they catch those animals, they don't bring it into the village. They have bear party around mm -hmm. across the river or someplace away from the village. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, they just say, they're having it in mm -hmm. at whoever's house, mm -hmm. but women and girls still don't go to to them. That's a Hatlani thing. Mm -hmm. um, there's just a lot of Hatlani stuff, like I don't know, like how we're not supposed to uh, do certain things. Girls always can't walk over boys' mm -hmm. things, and mm -hmm. you can't even. You have to walk around. If there's a gun, you can't just cross it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just walk over mm -hmm. uh, hunting things from men and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And long time ago, too, um, my mom always told us, because uh, we were mostly girls. Mm -hmm. I have five older sisters, so there were six of us and then four let's see, three, four, five boys, but uh, two of my brothers passed away. And so uh, we always let the men eat first mm -hmm. and stuff. It's mm -hmm. not like that it, as much anymore, mm -hmm. but um, I still believe in that. Like when we're at somebody's house eating, I always make sure my husband sits down first and that he eats just for respect. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I don't serve him anymore, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, at least I make the indication that he's there to eat first before I do. Mm -hmm. And stuff like that. And a lot of people don't do that anymore. Or we always, in our house, just eat all together now. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. a long time ago, the, and they used to just 
the men used to get food first. Because mm -hmm. so. they worked hard. And yeah. It, they mm -hmm. had to uh, eat first and yeah, stuff. Yeah, things like that. Mm -hmm. Just a lot of stuff that, customs that, uh, that we had to live by. And then, uh, so there was Huklani stories, and then there was survival stories, and mm -hmm. then the the riddles and such stories. Is was there any other type stories that you recall? Mm, like I said, there were some spiritual ones mm -hmm. too. Like mm -hmm. a lot of these stories, long time ago, were told by Kainis, uh, like uh, medicine men. Mm -hmm. Another topic I'm not so really supposed to talk about. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but that's how it was a long time ago. They were the ones who told the Kadanjitni stories. Mm. And, um, but they're mythical in nature. And they accurately, they accurately express thoughts and feelings that are experienced today. That... I experience even today, and maybe my kids don't really understand it, so they don't go by it. But I always tell them Hatlani when they do something, and then so they learn. Yeah, you know. I've noticed that sometimes mm -hmm. our elders, when we ask them questions for guidance, mm -hmm. they won't tell us a direct mm -hmm. answer, but they'll tell a they'll story. A story about it, uh -huh. and the stories. Uh, they tell of a lot of emotions, too. Mm -hmm. Like, they tell about jealousy, cruelty, and the tragedy of impoverishment and separation, mm -hmm. you know, families separating uh, for some reason, you know, mm -hmm. kids being given away, mm -hmm. or for some reason families are separated. But they also talk about generosity, mm -hmm. like sharing and caring and compassion for, and the joys, you know, mm -hmm. of prosperity when people get something mm -hmm. and share it with other people, and the unity of the village, you know, and the reunion in the stories, mm -hmm. you know, re reuniting with uh, loved ones when they're gone for a long time because. Sometimes, long, long time ago, they used to just be away for so long mm -hmm. hunting. You know, they might be away for three or four months, mm -hmm. going way up in the mountains for sheep, and then, you know, drying them out there. And they used to dry their food all the time, and then, then they'd finally come back mm -hmm. to the village, and everybody would be joyous and just eat together and everything. Mm. So just wow. those stories are in there in there too. You know, things about justice and next to injustice and then heroism next to weakness and love next to malice. You know, just mm -hmm. all those emotions, things come out in these stories. And a lot of the stories have uh, killing thing, mm. you know, mm -hmm. Uh, so in my Danaka class that I teach, I don't talk about some of them because mm -hmm. there's meanness in them in some of the stories of killing and stuff. But that's how um, that was a way of survival a long time ago, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. In thinking about uh, where you are today and your passion for language, mm -hmm. what what spurred that passion? in you for our languages? Oh, well, I grew up uh, only knowing Tanaka mm. until I was six years old. That was when the state school first came to Hughes. They first started the English school. Mm. And nobody knew English mm. when the first teacher came there. <laughs> wow. And I was so excited, though, about going to school you know, it was a new, I was only six years old, but I remember I was excited about it, and my mom dressed us all up, and we went back to the school, mm. and we had a really mean teacher, mm. and, you know, we only knew Danaka, so mm. I kept, and I liked to talk, so I guess I just kept talking in Danaka, so the first year I just stood against the board all mm. 
winter. That was my punishment with my nose against the blackboard mm. for speaking in the Naka. Because mm. he wanted us to just speak English. Mm-hmm. And we didn't know English, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to express myself, I guess. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And so wash our mouths out with soap. And they had these three-foot-long things they'd hit our hands with. and mm-hmm. um, Or just one teacher for the mm-hmm. whole village, that oh, man. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but uh, it was like, that's when I realized that they were trying to, I don't know, reform us maybe or Mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my dad, or one day then when I was getting spanked again, Mm -hmm. and I was against the board, Mm -hmm. then my sister got mad when the teacher hit me. And so she just jumped on his back and physically started fighting with him. Mm. And then my dad heard about it. We got sent home, and then we carefully told dad what happened. And he said, has this been going on all this time? It must have been winter now, a couple Mm. months of school already. And we said, yeah, he's a mean teacher, and we don't know what's wrong. And June said... She just talks too much in the Naka, that's why. <laughs> she told Dad, and <laughs> my sister June told him, and I said, well, I just want to say something, but I don't know how to say it in English. And he mm. said, uh, he went back with us, and he said, don't ever hit my mm. children again, he told Mr. Wilson. And he said, um, and then he said, you kids come home. And so all of us went home, and he sat us down, and he told us, Listen to how to speak English. Learn how to speak and learn how to live how the white man lived. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, learn from them and copy what they say. And you'll become educated in their ways. Mm -hmm. But when you come home, you can't speak English here. Mm -hmm. You speak Mm Tanaka at home Mm -hmm. and live the way we live at home. Mm So that's how I retained, because a lot of people my age didn't retain the language. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, the older, my older sisters all retained it. Mm -hmm. You know, they they were older when they school started, and they went off to Mount Edgecombe and everything. And I remember coming to Fairbanks at the age of fifteen. And I really, and I talked to Naka, you know, at home, Mm -hmm. still, Mm -hmm. at age 15, I was still speaking to Naka to the people in the village, Mm -hmm. the way I learned. And then when I came to Fairbanks, I didn't have anybody to talk with. Mm. So I remember I used to just wish mom would come to town or my sisters Mm -hmm. would come to town or somebody from Hughes would come. And then one day... I think there was like something going on. FNA was putting something on, I mm-hmm. think. And I was sitting there like a, maybe it was FNA potlatch or something. And I was just sitting at this table. It was like at old Ryan's, or Ryan's Middle School. They used to have FNA potlatch there. And I, um, I was just sitting there. And then I heard these ladies talking to Naka. Man, I turned around, and but I didn't say anything. I didn't know who they were, and they were talking, and I was listening to them, and I burst out laughing, and one of them turned to me, and she said, you hear us? I say, yeah, I understand you. I didn't catch some of the words here. They were ladies from, three ladies from Minto. Wow. And Music to your ears. Yes. And I just, I just burst out laughing. They said something funny and mm. I just laughed. And she said, you hear us? I said, yes. She mm. said, you girls, my friend Louise was with me, my best friend in high school, Louise Holmberg. And she said, what's going, what do you, what are they talking about? And I told her, you know, there's, talking, you know, so how silly people get when they talk in the Naka. And so she said, mm, you understand them? I said, of course, I've been trying to teach you the Naka. Mm-hmm. She said, but only one word at a time. I told her, well, you don't know how to talk yet. And 
So that ladies, we, they said, come, honey. So we sat by them and they said, you girls know how to dance? I said, the only time we dance in our village is when we have memorial potlatch. That was true then when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. And um, she said, you'll join our dance group. So yeah. we joined Mento Dance Group, Louise and I. And we were so happy. They dressed us up in um, were they elders? regalia. It was uh, Dorothy, Ellen, and... Man, I can't remember the others. They're all gone now. But, man, we had fun that winter with them. I couldn't uh, understand part of their dialect, but a lot of the words were similar to our words, so Mm. I could understand them. Wow. But uh, when I try to explain to them, they don't understand how I, my dialect of how I say it, but I could still understand them when they speak in the Naka. Mm. Yeah. They even took us to Canada with them. So cool. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, in thinking about the the riddle stories and Mm -hmm. stuff, um, you kind of touched on it, on why they do it in the winter. Um, On those stories, too. They do it in the winter because, you know, the winter is so dark Mm. and short. But I was going to say, too... um, at the end of each story, they always said, that, that means, I thought winter had just begun, and now I've chewed off part of it. Mm. And that's like praying to the spirits for a better life while shortening the winter months. Mm, beautiful. So every time they told Kadan Zidni, I remember my mom used to always say that at the end of the stories, and I never realized it until Catherine Atlas said it one time at a potlatch in Hughes. Mm. And I was always right by her when she came to Hughes. <laughs> All the time she was there, I was following her around mm. and listening to her. Can and, you tell our listeners, because Catherine Atla was a very important person in terms of languages mm-hmm. in the interior, right? Mm-hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about her? Um, Catherine Atla was a lady from Hughes, uh, married to Stephen Atla Sr. And she was the person I always followed. Mm -hmm. I remember from being a little kid, uh, they used to have memorial potlatch was all they had in Hughes in those days. Mm -hmm. And when they did have dances, it wasn't in the Naka, like Mm -hmm. how they just have, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. dancing and singing Mm -hmm. around here Mm -hmm. at tribal or Mm -hmm. whenever. Ours were mostly memorial ones, Mm. and I always remember her talking. Uh, Standing next to my dad was the chief way back then, and um, standing next to dad, and they'd be standing there for about an hour Mm. talking in Dinaka, and I'd understand them, and just telling about uh, long ago, telling the people about what's happening right now, and what people used to say a long time ago about what's going to happen in the world, and uh, thanking people for getting all the food that's out here, you know, and talking about the people they're having potlatch for. And I remember, too, they never used to have as many with so many people at one time. They'd have potlatch for one person at a time. Mm. And nowadays, it's like when we had potlatch in Hughes in June, it was like for four people. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be how it's happening now. Mm -hmm. But the tradition is still followed. Mm. You know, the two two nights of dancing and singing, and then the main potlatch on Saturday, and then the giveaway. So Catherine was like your mentor as a young child? Yes. 
She was, she was such a beautiful lady and well-spoken and she understood, I guess that's why I understand so much about yeah. our culture and language was from her too, mm -hmm. the way she taught me. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. Plus that I used to, there were these two elderly ladies, uh, Grandma Julia and Grandma Mariah and Hughes, that my dad used to leave me in the village when uh, they would go out in spring camp. Mm. He'd take the whole family and go 40 miles out of Hughes and, you know, trapping for beaver in the spring mm -hmm. and just living out there. And he always said, I'm going to leave you in the village with uh, Grandma Julia because you have to go to school. Mm. That's what he told me. And I used to just cry because I wanted mm -hmm. to go with everybody else. But... He said, you're going to be the one who becomes educated in our family and you'll do paperwork for me, he mm. told me, which I did until mm -hmm. he passed away. Mm -hmm. He always just bring a big sack of mail into town. He'll say, snap, I brought my mail. Mm. And I'd go to his room and I'd spend hours reading every single letter to him. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And snap, it means like a pet name? Mm -hmm. Or a daughter, Snack. yeah, uh -huh. uh, is like said then ah is uh. Uh, my child uh. said then ah, but he always said sna like for short, mm -hmm. mm. in like mm, an endearing way of saying my child. Uh. Ah, yeah. wow, mm -hmm. so cool. He just knew that you were going to be. Uh, Taking yeah. care of him and doing mm -hmm. the paperwork and mm -hmm. go on and get your degree program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Thinking back to that time, what's your uh, favorite uh, um, riddle story that you were that you remember? Was, uh, I remember the one we always used to want to listen to because it was kind of a, a funny. I mean, like not so. Uh, there was no killing in it or anything and no bad things, but that, that was about how Raven um, created the stars, the moon, and the sun. And uh, it's told in different regions of Alaska in different languages, but the way I remember it is, um, you know, Raven is a prominent um, being in our in our world, mm -hmm. and in all the worlds, I guess, mm -hmm. and uh, lives for hundreds of years, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, Raven, um, in the beginning of time, they said that, that it was all dark, the world mm -hmm. was dark. Uh, and so um, Raven knew this chief had a daughter, a beautiful daughter, and uh, and that the chief also had the sun, the moon, and the stars in in his in his house mm -hmm. in his and there's a smoke hole in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it's like I don't know what kind of house it was, but like a sod house, yeah, or something. Or something. Mm -hmm. And he had that in his house. He had the sun, the moon, and the stars, and so. Um, and that girl was growing up, and so one day, uh, Raven, smart Raven, thought, I gotta try to get that sun and the moon and the stars. So mm -hmm. he um, went, he followed that girl and saw her go to the spring to get water mm -hmm. and, you know, followed her for a while, and then one day he thought, somehow I have to get the get uh, her to bring me into their home. Mm. So he followed her down to the stream, to the water, when she was getting water, and uh, put a spruce needle in that water. And other stories, they, they would say, like little fish or uh, different kind of others. But in our area, we have tzaba, spruce, mm -hmm. spruce trees. Mm -hmm. So... He put a spruce needle in that water, dropped a, one little spruce needle in the water she was carrying. And when she got back to the, 
to their house, she drank some water and drank that spruce needle. And so, um, and she became pregnant from that. She's, she was carrying a child, and it's the raven. Mm. And so the baby boy was born, hmm. and the chief was so delighted to have a grandson and just spoiled that little baby boy. Mm. And it was the raven all the time had turned into this little baby. And then, so first, uh, um, and this story goes different ways, but how I remember my mom saying is, uh, first, she st- the baby started crying for the sun, hmm. playing with it. it in a ball form, I guess mm-hmm. it was, and playing with it and playing with it, and then pretty soon, poof, she's he threw it up hmm. into the into that hole in the uh, sod house or mm-hmm. whatever they had, the mm-hmm. chimney, mm-hmm. and it became light mm-hmm. out. And then so night time came, and he started crying and crying and crying again. And then um, the grandpa told him, what do you want now? Mm -hmm. And so he said, he wanted the stars. Mm -hmm. And so he'll play with the stars. And so I guess in ball form again. So he roll it around, and there's stars, like maybe in a dome. That's how we imagine, you know, in... But don't it need to you have images? You're supposed to have these images in your mind as they're telling the story. Mm-hmm. So they tell them like in a tone, in the naka, mm-hmm. you know how the tones go up and down mm-hmm. and just the expressions on their faces and stuff. Anyway, he was rolling that around and then threw it up mm-hmm. and went through and then there were stars. Mm-hmm. And then so... The next, you know, this didn't happen just right after one after the other. Maybe the next night or so, then he started crying and crying and crying again for the moon. And so Grandpa gave him the moon Mm. to play with. And he threw it out. That's how the moon came. (laughs) And then he just flew out and became raven again. Wow. That was the sad part, was Grandpa must have missed him, I mm. thought. When I was a kid, yeah. listening to it, you know. Yeah. That he came out and became raven again after he got the sun, the stars, and the mm. moon. Wow. And that's how the earth, I mean, the world formed. How raven forms the world. And w- that story, would it take your mom a long time to tell that story? Mm, yeah, yeah. Maybe she just say it, you know, in different tones, different expressions, and you know, sometimes we just say ah, or you know, uh-huh. you know, imagining yeah. how it is, you know. And that's another thing with uh, native language is that yeah. it's more descriptive than the actual yeah. word, right? Yeah, when they translate, you know, these stories. Uh, in English, it's not the same. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, it's hard to translate the way it's done in Danaka. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it has far more meaning in the e- native in the language. Naka. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Mm. I love it. So, so in thinking about um, that story and. Um, the raven story. What's the significance of that? Was that um, what's the significance of those stories? Well, that's why they say you have to respect animals mm. first of all. I think, and uh, raven is supposed to always be respected for creating the world. Mm. I guess is how this goes. And then, but animals too. Like, uh, even when my husband goes hunting right now, if he gets something, he always says something in the naka. He doesn't let me hear it, though, because I guess men aren't supposed to tell women. And so I don't ask him. But when we go out, I always, when I see that's a raven, I always just say, Tsik as, nech as, niach. And we watch it, and if it tips, it's tips its wing, then we look in that area Mm. where it tips its wing. Mm. And it works. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, this last time we went out last week and it didn't tip its wing. Mm. Mm-hmm. So we, Can you tell our listeners what Tsikath means? Oh, Tsikath means uh, old man, mm-hmm. old grandpa, old, old grandpa, Tsikath. Nihas niach, nihas is a, tra- a trap, like, niach is you said it, mm. you put it in being. Mm. Yeah. So, so cool. Mm-hmm. In case you're just joining us, we have Lorraine David here. She's sharing stories of long ago, especially the riddle stories. Um, I love that. And she was sharing what uh, she tells the raven and the stories of the beginning with mm-hmm. the raven as well. Um, so in thinking about it, what, what's the significance of the riddle stories to Alaska Native people in general? They're, um, the thinking is that as Alaska Native people, as cultural, traditional people, it doesn't even have to be only Athabascan, all over any indigenous culture, tradition. Um, if you follow uh, certain guidelines, know what's wrong and what's right, and know uh, where you come from, the culture and tradition you follow, and know your language, you always have um, your place. You are, mm. You're always, uh, you belong somewhere. Mm. You know where you belong. Um, you're following the ways of life, the way Qadanzidni stories long ago said that you always live uh, in tranquility with animals and the land and the sea and the air and sun, moon, stars, all the being. It's all part of your um, your being. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so that's that's how you know we hope that all people would be, but it's so different now, mm-hmm. and that's why so many things are getting lost in mm-hmm. this world, and so mm-hmm. many of our people are not in their right places mm-hmm. because uh, maybe they didn't follow tradition, or they did hatanis mm-hmm. or. You know, or they didn't believe in it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thinking about our young people and um, the stories that you're sharing, um, there's studies that show, and and from experience, you know, it's it's really important to know who you are and where you come from. Mm -hmm. And these stories, they really ground you in Mm -hmm. helping you to know where you come from. Mm Mm-hmm. What's do. your What's your advice for our young people? Just to listen to your elders. If there's any elders that are left to listen to, um, you know, there's lots of recordings at the university archives with older people recordings. Mm-hmm. I think even Catherine Atlas, some mm-hmm. of her recordings are there on this Kadanjitni stories. Wow. People should listen to those mm-hmm. um, and just try to find a place mm-hmm. to have peace and tranquility in their lives mm. and happiness. It'll bring you happiness if you know how to, you know, they won't be lost and wandering and, mm. you know, yeah. just to try to listen to uh, get back to the land and the animal, you know, spiritual world that mm. people lived in a long time ago. And that was survival for them too, but it was, it, it, it was their home, their, they were happy there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And simplicity in the, with the land and the yeah. water and the air and the, you know, mm-hmm. living a simple life, but being happy, mm. and that's and it was tough, but 
you know, it was the way of life. Mm -hmm. And it was, they're just into too, there's just too many things now that mm -hmm. kids are getting into, especially the technology. You know, one of these days there might, something might happen on this earth and there will be no technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How will they live mm -hmm. to get back to basics? Mm. So... Don't forget. Don't forget that you... I wish our native youth would know that and someone would maybe teach them that there is a way of life that's just so simple mm -hmm. if you follow all the guidelines and mm -hmm. you don't really need much to even be there and be happy. Mm. Mm -hmm. To live. Beautiful. Yeah. You know, um, I, I think you're, in following your passion, you're also um, doing the Indigenous Language Project, mm -hmm. and you're working with youth, right? Yes, just three to five-year-olds. They're so cute, mm -hmm. and they pick up the language so fast. Wow. They're, uh, I, had to I have to teach my teachers. I'm so fortunate that one of my teachers has been with me since all the five years. This is the fifth year of our classroom this year. Wow. But we're going back to virtual for now. Who's that? Uh, Frida. Whoa, Frida wow. Felix, yeah. yeah she's very been cool. with me uh, since young. the beginning of the project, and she's um, a really good teacher, really good preschool teacher. Wow. One thing it taught me was patience with kids mm -hmm. because I always just want things to just keep rolling and going, mm -hmm. you know, just smoothly when things happen. That with three to five year olds, that doesn't happen. <laughs> I found <laughs> out, and so it's like, uh, but they're so cute, and they just have so many questions mm. and you know things that they say. So it's like, it's um, and their parents are learning too. Uh -huh. I have recordings on the FN. If you Google FNA Indigenous Languages, mm -hmm. and you'll see our page on FNA website, then I have recordings there. So cool. Um, that, that we teach the kids. Yeah. And you said how long you've been doing this program? Um, this, it was a five-year grant from the U.S. Department of Ed. So we opened our classroom in August of 2017. So this is our fifth year. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. So, and then, so we started little nests, too, from, from the parents of the kids that we served. Um, they wanted still to learn the Naka, so wow. Dewey Hoffman helps me with that, and uh, Manazun, um, what's her name, Manazun, um, Kimberly. Oh, Kimberly. Yeah, uh -huh. Uh -huh. helps me with that, too. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, so in working with the youth, you know what, uh, in Western uh, culture, they'd call nursery rhymes. So is there nursery rhymes in uh, Riddle's old time stories too? Um, I never heard, well, it's all mythical, you know, but I think Don Sidney was more, um, it was harsher than nursery mm -hmm. rhymes. You know, it was reality and how to live in the, to survive, you know. Mm -hmm. But nursery rhymes, I think the way you're saying it, we had to make little songs mm -hmm. in our classroom because they're three to five-year-olds, so there are little songs that, like the welcome song in the morning and then at the end of the day, the Nanit Nagat song, like mm -hmm. see you later song. Uh, just in a sing-song way with the kids. That's mm -hmm. how we're teaching them. Uh, so we cool. never heard it like that when we were small. We were. Mm -hmm. It was just harsh reality, I guess. Yeah. In those long time, long long time ago, Adan Zidney stories. Because and, yeah. And in those stories, it was usually. Uh, animals talking mm -hmm. to us then yeah. and there was a communication between the humans and the animals mm -hmm. then right yes yes there was um 
So with the Raven, is there another is there another one of your favorite stories that you can share with us that you mm -hmm. recall from long ago? I like the uh, Taban Atzach. That's uh, Taban is the riverbank. Uh -huh. Atzach is crying on mm -hmm. the riverbank, and that's about the uh, porcupine story. Yeah, I like that one too. About the porcupine trying to cross the river to where there's. Uh, um, birch and spruce trees gnarled together on the other side of the river, but the porcupine can't swim. Uh -huh. So she was trying to find uh, someone, how, some way to go across. Uh -huh. And so she was sitting on the riverbank crying and crying and crying, and Otter came swimming by and uh, said, Why are you crying? Tsukal. Nadaku uh, and he's and don't cry and what's wrong? And so um, the porcupine said, I want to go across the river to where there's all these birch trees and spruce trees that are good food for me. And, and then so jump on my tail, the otter told told uh, the porcupine, and no, your your. Uh, Tail is like a stove poker, you know. And then so okay, um or so he just went away from her and kept swimming down the river. And then so she sat there crying and crying and crying again and then pretty soon a, a muskrat came along. I might have it backwards, but muskrat came along and um why are you crying? And asked. And she said, I want to go across to where there's all this good spruce and birch trees to eat. And so, get on my tail. Your tail is like a cast. A cast is a cane mm -hmm. and like a straight stick. Mm -hmm. And so, so he, she, he said, oh, okay. And so he swam off. And then pretty soon, a um, beaver came around and so uh, she said he said uh, why are you crying and this is all in Danaka but I'm not saying it in Danaka mm -hmm. uh, I have it in Danaka but it's nobody would understand me so anyway the beaver said uh, asked the same question and she said I want to go across to where all this birch good birch and spruce trees are to to eat and so Get on my tail, and she looked at his tail, and she said, "Okay, wait." And she ran up the bank, or you know, swaddled up the bank, I guess, and got her teapot and her little bag and little lunch and uh, her teapot and tea. I guess they had you know spruce brothers tree tea or something, mm -hmm. or she was expecting to get it from across there, and so she got on the beaver tail and started swimming across. The beaver started taking her across the river and she wanted tea so she made a fire on its tail and put up her little pot mm -hmm. and pretty soon it got too hot and he splashed in the water and she sunk to the bottom and then so she walked on the bottom and walked up the bank and then... Um, she found all her food, mm -hmm. but then she saw this well-worn trail, so she was following it, and then, uh, what are you doing on my trail, somebody told her. Kaka, it was the big animal, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm going to my food, uh, my birch and spruce trees, she said, mm -hmm. and he said, get off the trail or I'll um, step on your bladder. So she moved a little bit, and she said, I'm just going to go along here and go to... And then she, he said, uh, you have to stay off my trail or something. And then, and that's the part where, at the end of the story, they said, uh, uh, I thought the winter had just started, but I, it got cut short. Mm. That was him who said that. Mm. 
kaka. Mm. So after every story, that's what we say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So cool. Um, it's uh, interesting because that's the same story I was told by elders when I was uh-huh. a little kid. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, you know, and just thinking about how uh, our youth, our young people might be listening, what's your advice for them to stay connected with these stories mm. and um, the culture? Like I said, um, try to get all these, try to get these recordings. They might be even able to put it on their phones mm. or their devices now, you know. Uh, find out from the archives at the university how you can download all these recordings, maybe, mm-hmm. or how to get them mm-hmm. with this technology. The ultimate thing would be for a storyteller to sit down with youth, mm-hmm. have a program somewhere where there will be time scheduled to sit down with youth and tell them these stories in person in Denaka. Mm-hmm. But... You know, with the way things are now and with all this technology, why not use it? If that's what they want to do, be on their phone, at least be on something. Mm. Listen to listen to this Qadan Zidni. There's tape recordings at UAF on them. Mm. And Beautiful. listen to them and uh, think about the youth to think about their future, how they're going to live. Mm-hmm. And, you know... Find peace and happiness mm-hmm. in the in that way. I think if they find a place where they belong, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know they, and that's the way we were taught when we were small. My kids grew up here, so they never believed along. You know, I always tell them Hatlani or something, and even they don't. I don't know if they believe it or not, or. Mm-hmm. anything. Mm-hmm. Too many Hatlanis, my girls used mm-hmm. to tell me, and, you know, mm-hmm. all the things girls aren't supposed to do, I used to tell them <laughs> when they were small. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and even if they didn't, it feel, felt like they weren't listening, I'd just tell them anyway. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. sometimes, once in a while, my oldest daughter would say, oh yeah, that's Hatlani, she'd tell her mm-hmm. daughter. <laughs> You know, so she must have heard some of it. <laughs> awesome. You know, yeah. So came full circle. Just, yeah. So it's like, um, just try to learn these stories. Yeah. For the youth, somehow, if they want to do it on their devices, or maybe in the community of Fairbanks, set up a program somewhere where maybe this place or something where people can come and listen and have a scheduled time to just come and listen to these in person. If we find elders that can tell these stories just the way it used to be. I remember we used to just squeal sometimes when mom would say something, you know, in Mm. Danaka, like scary story or something. (laughs) Or we'd just all start laughing if it's something funny. You know, things like yeah. that, the expression, the imaging, you know, of these stories. Uh, love it. Yeah. What's your final parting words for everyone listening out there? I just hope that um, people take care of themselves. People try to help themselves in some way. The youth and, you know, mm, the elders to try to reach out to the youth. I try sometimes. Uh, it's hard to communicate with um, youth nowadays. Mm-hmm. We don't know how they're thinking or what they're thinking, or and they don't express themselves mm-hmm. as much. Mm-hmm. So just, um, I'm so happy though that in the community of Fairbanks, not in the last couple of years, but we used, they used to have events at the tribal hall, things like that, just cultural events that um, people can go to mm. to learn tradition, culture, language. Beautiful. You know. yeah. 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 Thank you so much, Lorraine. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. 
Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing your experiences and thank you all for tuning in today. Thank you to Doi Unlimited for their generous sponsorship of this programming that are put on by the Morris Thompson Cultural and Visitor Center, Danakanaga, and Tanana Chiefs Conference. I'm Sharon Hildebrand. Thank you and take care of one another. Take care Let's of one take another. care of one another.